If you've watched my channel before, then you know I have a lot of stuff. And to be honest, I have really struggled with organization over the years. I have spent so much money on storage containers and so much time arranging and rearranging my things. And it always looks great when I get done. And then in a few short months, it's just a disorganized mess again. And that's because organization is only successful if it's something you can maintain. So today, I want to share with you the lessons that I have learned and give you my absolute best ideas for getting and staying organized. I'll be working in my craft room because I'm getting a new craft table, which I can't wait to show you. But the tips that I'll be sharing are applicable to any space that needs an organizational overhaul. So let's get started. The first step in any organizational job is sorting through the things that you already own and throwing away or donating those things that you don't need or want anymore. This will help you to create a mental inventory of everything that you have, and it will also save you space because you won't be storing things that you're never going to use again. As you're sorting, decide where you will store each type of item. It might be a specific tub, a shelving unit, a cabinet, or even a closet. I purchased this tower of wire baskets at a garage sale, and it's perfect for storing the wood supplies that I use in many of my crafts. And because these baskets are all full, I won't be buying any new wood supplies until I use up some of what I already have and space is available. I used this old cabinet to store empty picture frames and framed art. And I used three metal bookcases along the wall to store thrift store wood and some metal home decor items. I store glassware and dishes on wall shelves on the opposite side of the room. And of course, you need some kind of container to hold your nails, screws, and other fasteners and small hardware. When your supplies are hidden away in Rubbermaid containers, you may forget about certain items. But when you can see your supplies on display, they can inspire and help you come up with new ideas for projects. If you have a lot of stuff like me, you may want to group things together into even smaller categories to make it easier to find things. For example, on the bookcases holding the wood decor, I created categories such as mirrors, wall decor, platters, and boxes. I even divided up the glassware on the shelves into categories like apothecary jars, cloches, and glass candlesticks. Organizing by color can help you to quickly find what you're looking for, especially when dealing with a large collection of items, like ribbon. Although I think ribbon looks very pretty when displayed on dowel rods, keeping it in small drawers organized by color has been a much more practical system for me. Using clear containers has also been very helpful. When I can see what I have and where it goes, it's much easier for me to stay organized. Clear containers also save me time because I can easily find what I need and not waste time searching through opaque containers. Although I love the look of clear acrylic containers, they can be pricey, but clear food storage containers like those found at Dollar Tree work just as well. Like using clear containers, using labels makes it easier to identify and locate specific items. It also makes it faster and more efficient to find what you need, especially when you have a large collection of supplies. 
Although having a label maker is totally unnecessary, I find it fun to use, and so having one on hand makes it more likely that I will make and use labels. You don't have to spend a lot of money to create effective storage solutions. In fact, the majority of the furniture in my craft room was purchased at thrift stores, and most of the containers were purchased at Dollar Tree. However, when you have as much stuff as I do, you might want to invest in a few items specifically designed to address your needs. When I last made over my craft room, I purchased some toy tubs that ended up working out really well for storing small things like cabinet knobs and bird nests. This cubby that I purchased for flower storage was a flop. I didn't get a picture, but my flowers were always in a disarray. So I purchased a triangular shaped metal garment rack that I think is going to work much better. It came with a triangular base and screw on casters and three large wire grid panels that were easy to assemble with the included connectors. Once it was assembled, I began grouping my faux plants and flowers together by color and type and inserting them into the grid. I put greenery on one side and flowers on another. I thought about hanging wreaths on the third side, but decided to leave it empty for now. I like having the space available to use for Christmas and other seasonal greenery that I currently store in large tubs during the off season. I attached a few small clear tubs with zip ties to hold pieces of greenery that were too small for the grid openings. I love how I can see all of my florals in a glance and they are so easy to grab and to put back. No more digging in tubs and no more messing with lids. My new flower tower is one example of how to make use of vertical space, but there are so many ways to make your walls work for you. I'm a big fan of using inexpensive wall shelving. One advantage of wall shelving is its flexibility. You can easily adjust the spacing to accommodate the sizes of your specific items. Wall shelving can also hold a large number of items that are both easy to see and easy to access. You can also stack smaller storage units on top of one another, like these thrift store shoe bins. I removed some of the separators in the bins to create openings large enough to hold a small bin. If you need even more storage, you can attach any kind of basket to the wall to hold tall or awkward items. I use wall baskets to store wallpaper, contact paper rolls, vinyl for my Cricut machine, and special paper for my printer. I even screwed a small hook in the wall to hold all my Cricut mats. And of course, if you're organizing a craft room, you need a good table. If you watched my hot mess craft room video about a year ago, then you know there is something very important missing from this big open space. And that is a craft table. And there's a very good reason that my table is not here because my husband for Christmas gifted me a brand new custom built craft table by a local carpenter. And he is on his way here and I can't wait. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. I can't wait. I've got so much nervous energy. <laughs>
My carpenter, J. Him Woodworking, included some custom details, like a large paper roll so I can keep my work surface clean, a metal plate for my hot glue gun, and a removable wood pad where I can drill. Place your work table near a window if possible and install plenty of artificial lighting. Remember the old show, The Twilight Zone? Well, when I'm crafting, I get into the DIY zone. And to stay in the zone, I need to be able to grab my supplies without much thought or effort. That's why it's so important to me to have my most frequently used supplies in close proximity to my work table. So I dedicated the top drawer of the craft table to scissors, cutting utensils, scrapers, rulers, and pencils. The other two drawers are dedicated to my most used floral supplies. Things like styrofoam, floral wire and tape, various mosses, succulents, and small pieces of greenery. Paint brushes and a hot glue gun are the only supplies that have a permanent spot on top of my work table. Many of my other most used supplies like Mod Podge, antiquing wax, and twine are on the shelves right beside the work table. Below these shelves, I have several trays storing small supplies like feathers, butterflies, and other miniatures. On that counter, I also have a small Lazy Susan to use for painting projects. My carpenter created six deep but narrow drawers on the back side of the work table. These drawers are not in a good location to store frequently used items, but they are in close proximity to my sewing machine, and they happen to be a great size for storing fabric and trim. In my opinion, there is no better organizational system for hand tools than pegboard. I previously installed pegboard on the wall next to my work table and made it prettier by covering it with some contact paper. You can easily customize your hooks to accommodate your specific tools. Carpenter also installed pegboard in the end cabinet of the work table. I think I'm going to use this space for wreath forms. If you have large machines and power tools that you use regularly, you really need to create designated spots for them. I have learned the hard way that it is a great time saver to keep these items in easily accessible locations. For example, when I stored my sewing machine in a cabinet, I was much less likely to use it because I didn't want to drag it out and set it up. Now I keep it out, plugged in, and ready to go, loaded with white thread, so I can quickly stitch something up in just a few minutes. And I keep my sewing supplies in a cabinet right next to the sewing table. If you're lucky enough to own a cutting machine, leave it out too, and keep the supplies for the machine nearby. This makes the process of using it much more efficient, allowing you to complete projects much faster. I created a similar setup for my printer. I have my printer, all of my different types of paper and printing supplies stored together. It's not pretty, but it's handy. And I keep stickers, IOD transfers, and other paper-related supplies in the extra drawers down below. For several years, I have stored my most used power tools in a thrift store cabinet directly beside my work table, and it has worked just fine. But now I'm going to store my larger cans of paint and stain here, by moving them from one of the upper shelves, I was able to create more room for crafting supplies. So where are my power tools now? 
All right, you're going to be jealous, but I have two heavy duty roll out shelves in my new crafting table. Thanks again, J. Ham. You thought of everything, including little shelves nearby to store my hot glue sticks and all of my drill bits. And if you have a lot of battery operated tools, you'll want to include a charging station. No more messy cords for me. When I was using a dining table as my work table, I obviously had no storage. So having a rolling cart to hold my most used paints and painting supplies was a huge benefit. With my new table, I may not need the cart anymore. However, I'm trained to find my paint here, so I'm not ready to give it up just yet. Once you have all of your stuff organized, then the success of your systems will be tested in the days to come. If you can't stay organized, that means you need to create different systems that work for you. For me, that means I use disposable paper on my craft table to keep the surface clean. And I keep cleaning supplies nearby. I avoid using tubs with lids because it only takes a second to toss something in an open tub. I also try to avoid stacking things on top of one another because a stack always means extra effort to put things away. I also like to leave some open available space for those extra seasonal items. As always, thank you so very much for watching today. And if you found this video helpful, I hope you'll share it with someone else who could use some tips on getting and staying organized.